Welcome back to Book View Now, our coverage here of the Miami Book Fair on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I'm joined now by Nathan Hill to talk about his novel, The Knicks, his acclaimed first novel. Congratulations <laughs> to you. Thank you so much. Um, I think we should first say, what is a Knicks? Uh, yeah, I have to, uh, when I say it out loud, I have to spell it N-I-X, or people yeah. think I've written a basketball novel, which That's I right. have not. Uh, yeah. A Nix is a, a kind of Norwegian ghost. It comes from old Scandinavian folk tales. Um, uh, it's usually depicted as a water spirit. That's yeah. kind of an ugly troll-type beast that hides in the water, but it's a shapeshifter, and sometimes it will appear to children as a beautiful white horse. Uh, and it will tempt them to climb aboard. And if the kids do climb on, mm -hmm. it'll gallop into the water and drown them. Um, Lovely. Yeah, one of those stories to tell 11-year-olds at exactly. night. Exactly. You know? <laughs> those are the best. Those are the famous uh, yeah. child stories that all have death in them, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was interested in it because I thought, uh, I was thinking about it from the child's point of view. I thought, you know, for a while, and this horse appears, it must be the coolest thing that ever happened to them. Right. You know, how, how amazing would that be? Your very yeah. own horse. And then, of course, tragedy happens. And, and the moral of the story kind of struck me that sometimes the things you want the most or love the most can also hurt you the most, um, which seemed relevant to what was, what was happening to the characters in the novel, so it became the title. Did, but did you know what a Nix was? I mean, did you start with that? Word? Did you know that before you started writing this book? I didn't. I found that along the way. Yeah, oh, it, was really? a, it was a story I discovered along the way. And, you know, I, I wrote the book over ten years, so there was a lot of things I discovered <laughs> along the way that I didn't know were going to be in the book that that ended up in the book. Uh, and that was that was one of them. My uh, my family on my mother's side uh, is, uh, is it came from Norway couple generations back yeah. uh, and so uh, I've, I've always had a soft spot for those old stories yeah. and uh, and yeah so when, when I discovered the story of the Knicks it's kind of stuck with me because it came from Norway and then eventually I realized that it had resonance you yeah. know in, 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 in uh, among the, the characters in the book. So, so when you tell me about 10 years and a lot of things discovered along the way, it makes mm -hmm. me, of course, wonder where it all started. I mean, what did you start with? I started in 2004. I had just moved to New York City uh, in 2004, and uh, um, uh, August, I think. And uh, one of the first things that I saw in the city my first month there was the uh, protests around the, the, the Republican National Convention uh, uh, at Madison Square Garden. Um, that was Bush Cheney's second, tour, uh, second term, and the war in Iraq was happening, mm -hmm. and a lot of people were coming to, to mm -hmm. protest. And I, I went down into Manhattan to watch all the, the hubbub. Um, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back at my apartment, uh, I had. Uh, 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 I had a, a sublet that was a temporary uh, apartment, and I was moving to a more permanent apartment. And then, in that weird time between the move, all of my stuff was stolen. Mm -hmm. Like my computer and all my writing that I'd been working on for like three years, all of it was stolen and lost, and I had to start over. And so, I started with the thing that was most interesting that I had seen recently, which was the RNC protest. So that's where it all began. Wow! And uh, and then it it ballooned on me after but, that. But but out of uh, losing. The past, in a sense. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I suppose at the moment it didn't feel like I have. Oh boy, I have a fresh slate, and I could just start anew. No, there's no silver lining <laughs> at that moment. It was just mostly very, very sad. But yeah. eventually, uh, I found a story that I could, I could really, really dive in. So um, there's a lot to the story. Yeah. But just to help people in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is it's a story about a, a, a child losing a parent for a long time. Mm -hmm finding that parent later on, mm -hmm. and then the story, or the stories, right? Tell me, tell me how do you describe the, the novel you've written? Uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky. Uh, I, I, it kind of depends on who I'm talking to. Okay. Uh, sometimes I call it a family mystery. Sometimes I call it a, a, a historical novel because a lot of it takes place in, uh, in Chicago in 1968. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, but mostly I talk about the main story, the main characters, uh, Faye and Samuel. Faye uh, is the mother, Samuel is the son, and uh, Faye leaves the family unexpectedly when Samuel is 11 years old. And then he doesn't see her again for about 20 years until one day in 2011, uh, she is on the news throwing rocks at a ultra-right conservative presidential candidate. And she kind of explodes on the internet, becomes this sensation, and he decides that he is going to investigate her life and to figure out not only why she threw these rocks, uh, but also why she, 
she left the family and mm -hmm. what big secret, what big mystery she was, she was hiding. Because the mother that he knew was not that, that mother. Right. right? He, knew, he knew someone who was very quiet, you know, very distant, very kind of cold. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not uh, the kind of passionate person that, that he saw in that video. You know, I, I, I wasn't going to do this, but since you, I, could, would you mind just reading the first I would love paragraph to. from the prologue? Because it sort of sets up just what you're talking about here. If Samuel had known his mother was leaving, he might have paid more attention. He might have listened more carefully to her, observed her more closely, written, crucial, <laughs> written certain crucial things down. Maybe he could have acted differently, spoken differently, been a different person. Maybe he could have been a child worth sticking around for. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> it is a sad. It is. <laughs> I'm glad you can laugh now. Yeah. Who wants to read for the next 700 pages? Or something? I should say that there's also some very funny things. Yeah, about I know. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have you read it to bum everybody out. But I mean, but it does lead to the, well, I mean, it leads to the sorrow, but it also leads to this um, quest for, uh, I guess, versions of ourself or what, or how much we actually know about the people we think we know about. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things that, uh, that is, is true about all of the characters is that they, they have a hard time um, uh, not only um, seeing each other for who they really are, but seeing themselves for, yeah. for who they, they really are. I mean, Faye, the mother, has a certain <coughs> opinion of herself and what she, who th she thinks she is, what she thought her life was supposed to be like that, uh, that actually blinds her to what's in front of her. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's happening to a, a lot of the characters. So yeah, the, 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 uh, the book is, is a book about, uh, about people being distant from each other, but also distant from, from themselves and, 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 uh, and their own lives. You, you, you're, you're telling me about going to New York, trying to write, losing everything. Of course, the protagonist here is a, something of a washed up uh, or a wannabe yes. right, writer. And I've read a little bit about some, I guess, other, are there, how much of their, how much of you is in this or how much of people you know ended up there? There was a, a point in my writing career after I, I had left New York after a couple years and, uh, and I was having no success at all. You know, yeah. I, was, I was getting rejected everywhere. Uh, and looking back on it now, I, I, I sort of realized that, that one of the reasons I was getting rejected everywhere is because I was treating my writing uh, in the wrong way. I was, I was very careerist about it. You know, I, I would think, I need to write a certain kind of story that will get into a certain kind of journal, that will get a certain kind of agent interested in me so I can get lunches with certain kind of editors. Like, really? That's, it's, yeah. it's hard not to feel like you're yeah. a young man and you're like, want to be a writer, and it's hard not to feel that way. Um, like, a, I got to go A, B, C. And yes, you, you move to New York City, and you're yeah. like, okay, this is, this is yeah. how to do it. And yeah. it turns out that's not a, how to do it at all. Um, when I was trying to like, impress people with my writing, my writing was really unimpressive. <laughs> uh, so I, I kind of dropped out of the, of the kind of writing, yeah. uh, um, querying, publishing world. And when I started writing this book, uh, in earnest, uh, it was really just doing something that was idiosyncratically just me. Nobody, for the, for the 10 years I worked on it, like nobody knew anything about it except for my wife. Yeah. yeah. But, but, the, but then it came out to um, a, a lot of attention. I mean, yeah. that no one could, you couldn't expect, right? You couldn't probably imagine. Yeah. I, my, well, my house was an optimism-free zone for the year before it came out. Yeah, uh, yeah. My wife was really excited because she had read the book and she, yeah, she really liked yeah. it. She thought everybody was going to like this book. And, I, and I'm very aware that, uh, that so many books, there's so many great books that, that are published yeah. and so many books take a long time to find their audiences. Yeah. And so I, I, I didn't want to jinx myself. But, uh, but well, also so what just, was it like when it happened, when all that? Very surreal. Yeah, um, yeah very surreal. Uh, uh, it, it seems like a lot of people have really enjoyed it, and it's obviously incredibly gratifying. But I'm, I'm not sure how to how to process it just yet. Like, ask me in a year; I'll probably have a really yeah. good answer for that. Well, I mean, before we start, you told me you're at the end of months now, right? Yeah, of, yeah, of yeah. talking about this, so it, it. I mean, that's a good thing, but that's also a kind of endless thing, right? Well, I've been on yeah, I've been on uh, a book tour now for about three months. I just yeah. came back a couple of days ago from from a really really pleasant trip to Germany mm -hmm. and the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and and over there, I'm, I'm, I found really extraordinary readers yeah. Uh, yeah. as well as all the amazing readers I've I've met uh, I've met stateside. So it's been uh, it's been obviously lovely, you know, like uh, it's, uh, connecting with all of these people has, has yeah. been uh, a real joy. You know, the, I mean, the other obvious question in this, I think, at least hits me is. And I'm listening. You tell me about the experience of realizing how to write a book. You know, mm -hmm. not by the chart. But this is a big, ambitious book, right? 
Was that part of the new thinking about writing? I mean, did you just sort of let go and just write the book you wanted to, or let it write it? Uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but how did you start thinking about something that turned into such a big, kind of ambitious type book? I gave myself permission to go down whatever rabbit hole I wanted uh -huh. to go down. Uh, I, I guess I decided somewhere along the way that if there's no guarantee that it's going to get published, and no guarantee that anybody's going to ever read it, it might as well be fun to write. Mm -hmm. It might as well give me some pleasure and joy just doing it. So yeah, it, 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 it blew up on me partly because uh, I just let myself write whatever I really enjoyed writing, whatever mm. brought me some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of joy. It, it felt like, uh, uh, it felt sort of like keeping a garden in that way. And, you know, like I was tending to a garden, you know, every, every day for like an hour. And I wasn't doing it because, you know, you keep a garden because you want to get famous. Nobody does mm -hmm. that. Nobody thinks their garden is a failure if a lot of other people don't see it. It's just you like to garden. So like, that's sort of how I felt about about it. It was just this thing that I, that I did um, when I could find the time to do it, and it brought me some everyday uh, joy and comfort to do it. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it, it, it got big, but only because I, I enjoyed writing what, what, you, what you'll read in the, page, in, in the pages. Like, I really liked doing it. That's great. Ten years of, ten years of gardening pleasure. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on it. The Nix is the novel by Nathan Hill. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the invitation.